All right, we will go ahead and get started here today. Again, my name is Tom Lyons. I'm a senior support engineer and subject matter expert with Info Communications. Um, I work on the Mitel platforms as well as Genesis Cloud and Ring Central. And I have over six years, almost seven years now of unified communications experience. And I'll be bringing you through our short webinar today. A little bit about Inflow Communications before we get started. Inflow does have a sole focus on unified communications and contact center solutions. What that means is we don't branch into other facets of technology like networking equipment. We focus solely on the voice product. As a result of that, anytime you call us for support on your voice equipment, you're going to get in touch with an engineer who's well-versed in your platform and will be able to assist you. We are a platinum partner with Mitel, as well as partnered with Ring Central, and we are a gold Genesis partner also. We have offices and employees across the United States and currently service over 200,000 endpoints and 800 customers nationwide and in many cases worldwide. And we're maniacal about the customer experience. We wanna make sure that you get all the information you need and then some for your voice equipment and your, and your rollout for your voice at, um, environment so that you can make it work as efficiently as possible um, for your business needs. Couple of upcoming webinars that we have in the pipe. Um, this month, we do have a lot going on with Teams. So if you're looking at Microsoft Teams in any capacity, these may be of interest to you. On the seventh, we do have one on using Microsoft Teams and your Mitel PBX. So if you're using a Mitel system, such as the one that we're gonna be talking about today, this will go over specifics of how to actually integrate and work with, um, with your existing PBX and utilize Microsoft Teams. On the 13th, we are running a brief Ring Central Administrator training. This will be a quick high level view of the options that you have available in Ring Central and what you can do for your system and for your users. And on the 14th, we are also running a webinar on Microsoft Teams and Cloud PBX. So if you have a cloud phone system and you're, you are interested in Microsoft Teams, this would be a good one for you as well. Here's a quick snippet of some of the customers that we support. And as always, we do have a questions and answers box um, in GoToWebinar. If you do have any questions, you can throw those in there. If you have anything that comes up that I cannot answer directly, I will send it to you in email after the webinar and any questions that are um, submitted will be answered at the end. And so with that, let's go ahead and jump over to the Connect Contact Center. I'm gonna go ahead and log out here. And so this page, you'll notice that I'm just in a web browser. Um, this is about the interaction center that comes with the connect variant of contact center um, that is used with Mitel Director for a, for a call center environment. So we're actually focusing on the interaction center today. Um, this is going to be specific to calls through that. Um, we will not be touching the connect client for this portion. So um, to go through this from a login process, um, when if and when you guys are using Connect Contact Center, you will be presented with a URL that you will use to log in. Um, that URL, which you can see up at the top for mine, that ecc.shortellsupport.com slash ecc, um, may be an IP address or it may be a regular name. Um, it will be sent to you by your system administrator. When you go there, it's gonna bring you to a very simple page like the one that you see now, where it just asks you to enter your username and your password. This username and password is exactly the same as it would be if you're going to log into your Connect client. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and log in, enter those credentials, wait for it to load. And it brings me, as you can see, to a very, um, a very basic um, page here. There's not a lot going on. Um, I can see that I'm available. I have the ability to log in and log out of queues, which we'll go over here momentarily. I can also see my name in the top right to show that I'm logged in. Um, and other than that, it's a fairly blank page. Depending on the information that you have available to you, you're not gonna see a lot here. Um, you will see queues pop up if you have queue access when calls are waiting. And if you have the ability to see other agents, you would see other agents in this tab. But what we're gonna focus on today is kind of what you can do to log in and log out, go into breaks to make sure that you're able to take breaks appropriately, um, change your settings so that you can change how your notifications work, and also see how calls operate in the system. So to go through um, a couple of these options here before we go into calls, up at the top, you've got two drop downs here. You've got one that says log out of my queues and one that says stop taking requests. So right now, what that tells us is we're actually currently logged in, which it will automatically do when you first log into the system for the first time. 
And I'm also set up to be able to take requests. So it has put me right into the pool um, for um, the services that I am a part of so that I can handle those requests as they come in. To log it out of the queues, I can, do, I can click on this as simple as just log out of my queues. If I click into it, you'll notice that I am now set to not ready and it says log into my queues. If I click, in, click into this button again, I go right back to available. You'll also notice a drop down. This is going to be specific to whether or not you were able to log into multiple queues if you're allowed to do so in your organization, which is a setting that can be changed by your system administrator. If I click on this drop down, you'll notice that I have a number of different um, different uh, groups that are available here, and I can click and choose which groups I'm supposed to be a part of for that day. So if I, for example, shouldn't be in click to call today, I could change that slider. If I am supposed to be in the escalations queue, I could turn that on. So it's as simple as turning it on, highlighting it blue to actually be logged into that queue. And if it's over to the left and grayed out, you were not logged into that queue. Similarly, you also have a button to stop taking requests. This is specific to taking breaks or if you're pulled into meetings, um, things of that nature, where you aren't done for the day with taking calls. However, you need to let the system know that you're not available. And this is used for tracking purposes. So people can track um, who's taking lunches, when they're taking lunches, how long people have been on breaks. This is part of the reporting in the system. And you can do much the same thing as you can do with the logout of queues. If I click on the stop taking requests, you'll notice that it now shows me in release and it is counting up. So I am currently in a release state where I can't take any calls. Um, the system is not able to actually send me a call. Um, and when I click on start taking requests again, it'll put me back into available. That is what's called a no code release. So if you have a non-specific release, you can use that. However, more often than not, you're gonna have um, a specific reason that you were going to want to go into release, such as maybe it's your break time or maybe it's time to take your lunch. That's where this drop time comes in handy. And your options will change depending on what is available to you in your organization. But if I click on this drop down, you'll notice that I have a whole bunch of different codes. So I've got break, lunch, training, meeting. I, I down at the bottom, I've got like TAC escalations if I need to take a ticket directly to MyTel. There's a bunch of different options that I have um, for this. So if I wanted to say that I had to handle a TAC es escalation, I could click on that one. And you'll notice that it still shows the same counter that it did with the regular um, release. However, it is showing that I am now in TAC escalation. And this actually shows up in reporting. So the system can actually um, differentiate which release code you're in to see why you were out of the queue during the day. So it's, it's a good way to show exactly what you're doing for your environment. Once I'm ready and done with this TAC escalation, I could click on start taking requests and it puts me right back to available. Nice and easy. Over on the right as well, we have my name and a drop down. If I click on this, you got two different options, settings and sign out. We'll go over settings real quick and then we'll go over the call functions as the call functions are fairly limited in the interaction center. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on settings. And when I click in there, you'll notice that it will show me at the top. It'll show that I am an agent as well as a supervisor and my extension. And then you have a number of different notification options. So these will be sound notifications that'll come through. This will come through your default audio device. That is one thing that is not directly configurable in here is um, the ability to select different output devices. Um, so if you're using a headset, these sounds will come through your headset. And you'll notice that there are notifications for a new voice call, confirming an outbound call, um, which to clarify on this, you don't actually place outbound calls through this client. You would have to use your connect client for direct outbound calls. However, if you were using callbacks in your ECC environment, this is what this is talking about. It'll actually pop up and confirm you are available before placing that outbound call for the callback. As well as you're, if you're using any new chat or if you're using any chat or email in your environment, it'll, it'll um, play a sound for that or if you have a new chat message. So you can turn these on and off at your leisure, whatever works for you. The other piece to it is the desktop notification. It will actually pop up a little notification if, you're, if your screen is in focus um, when you get um, different messages, such as a new call, the same outbound call, um, the chat messages, and also will pop up if you have any issues with connecting to the server. Um, which would be the warning messages, as well as forced release, which if you aren't familiar what forced release is, um, what that is, is if you get a call and you do not answer it in the specified amount of time before it rolls to another agent, 
um, you will be placed into forced release, which will show up in the top left. It'll show forced release and a release counter, just like um, the uh, the uh, the status showed when I was um, set up in release here. And it it will not allow you to take calls until you actually make yourself available again. Then there's just a couple other things you can see. You can see the queues you're logged into. You can't actually change the queues from here. You do have to use this drop down. So you need to have the ability to do that in order to change specific queues. And you can also see the language that this is showing. So you can see there's actually a drop down with different languages that you can choose. That's pretty much it for the settings. This is a very simplistic environment um, that is used here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my queues and I'm gonna actually throw a call into queue to show you what that looks like. So this call is coming through now. You'll notice that I got that little toast here, incoming call, click to answer. I've got the information, so the phone number, the caller name, the group, the service, the DNS it came in on, and the priority of the call. Um, if I wanna answer this call, I just click this green answer button, and you'll see that I am now on the phone call with this phone number. Um, you can see the counter that is ticking up here, um, and you only have a few options with a call that comes in through the interaction center. So we'll go through those here real quick. Um, the first one here, this little tag, is going to be the ability to sign up, sign a wrap-up code to the call that we're on. This is gonna be used so that you can, you can report against the kinds of calls that are coming in. So you can see here, I've got a few different things like customer complaint, happy customer, sale declined. I can choose one of these to, that would best encapsulate the type of call that I am currently on. So if this is a happy customer just calling in, I could just click on happy customer. And that will tag the call with that wrap-up code when the call is ended. To your right, if you do have supervisors that are watching for um, for help um, in the ECC queue itself, you can use this request help button. Um, this will actually pop up a little tab in the agents category. You can see where it says help request. Um, and if anybody has th that checked, then any supervisors would be able to see them in here and would be able to then see what they need. So you can do that here. Um, the other options here are simply transfer and conference. If I click on transfer, you'll notice it wants me to type in an extension to transfer. So um, I can type in the transfer here and I can do a console transfer or a blind transfer. A console transfer is gonna place the call that I'm currently on on hold, call the person that I'm trying to transfer to to make sure that they're available to take the call. And if they are, I can send it through to them. If they are not, then I can bring the call back to me to let let the person I'm on the phone with know. Blind transfer is just gonna send the call through. So nice, a nice quick transfer, once it's done, you are, you are done um, with the call and there's nothing else that you need to do there. Similarly, if I click on the person with the plus sign, um, you can conference call in. You can type in an extension to conference and you'll notice that only consult is available. So it does make sure that the other, the other side is available. Um, to jump on this call before you bring everybody together. There is no blind conference available in the interaction center. While I'm on this call, you'll notice that I'm currently shown as busy, um, which means that I cannot take another ACD call. So you can see that in here just fine. And then up at the top, um, you'll, there's just two more buttons, which is the hang up button that will end the call. And then there is a hold button, which currently with our demo setup is not currently functioning. However, to talk about it, what, what would happen if I press this hold button is you would actually then see a hold indicator um, where the phone is, and you would see a new counter to show how long the person has been on hold. Once you on hold the call, which you would do by pressing the, hold, the on hold button, which would, would show up once you have the call on hold, then it will bring you back to the call and it will start um, ticking up the timer for that call. At this point, we will go ahead and disconnect the call. And you'll note here, it will ask me if I wanna do any different wrap. Um, it's asking, it's counting down my, tol my total wrap up time, which was a default of 20 seconds. If I extend that, it will actually get rid of the timer and allow me to finish whatever I'm doing, if I'm taking any notes or anything of that nature. And then when I'm done, all I have to do is hit end wrap up and I am right back to where I was in the beginning.
So this one is pretty straightforward. There's not a, a whole lot to the interaction center. A couple of things to note um, for any outbound calls, any personal greeting changing, any of that anything of that nature, the interaction center is not what you use for that. You actually would use the Mitel Connect client, which is the standalone application that you use on the PBX side. This is for taking call center calls. Um, and it is fairly simplistic and it's designed to be that way to make it nice and easy to use um, during, during the day for your workflows. So with that in mind, if we have any questions, I'll go ahead and pop open my questions box here. And we will see what comes through. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, doesn't look like we have any direct questions. If anything does come up, you can always reach out to us after the fact, that's not, not a problem at all. In fact, for our current customer resources, if you have any questions or if you're having an issue with your phone system and you need to get in touch with Inflow, you can reach us with these guidelines here. Um, you can send us an email at support at inflowcommunications.com. Those are answered in the order they are received. So we do highly recommend if you do have a critical issue to give us a call. Um, we are fairly, fairly fast on email responses. Um, but um, if you have anything urgent, definitely give us a call to get on the phone live with somebody quickly. We also have a support portal at support.inflowcommunications.com. This will allow you to take a look at all the tickets that you have in the system with Inflow. Um, their statuses, you can reply to them as well. And if you're the main contact for your phone system, you can actually get it set up so that you can see all the tickets that your organization has opened with Inflow. If you haven't used this before and you're interested, I would um, send us an email or give us a call. There's a couple things on the back end we have to set up in order to get this working for you. And then finally, for any critical issues or if you just prefer to speak to somebody in support on the phone, you can give us a call at 855-946-3569 or 855-9-INFLOW. We do have a three ring answer policy, so we will be picking up the call um, as quickly as absolutely possible. You won't be on hold for 10 to 15 minutes waiting to get in touch with somebody. And when you do get on the phone with somebody, you're gonna be directly on the phone with a support engineer who will be able to assist you with your phone system. Also, if you, have, if you would like any more information on Inflow support packages, you can send us an email at sales at inflowcommunications.com or give us a call at 844-446-3569. So again, on behalf of Inflow Communications, my name is Tom. Thank you so much for taking the time to join our webinar today. Um, we do very much appreciate it, and we hope we see you in the future. Thank you very much, and you have a wonderful day.